So firstly, um, often industrial processes occur at much higher temperatures. Obviously, there's a more controlled environment. There's not so many students walking in and out. You're working on these all day long. You're not just sort of dipping in and out as you do with, with all the different subjects that you look at. Um, it also means that we can carry them on over long periods of time, which often means we can slow some of these processes down in order to try and drive them a long way towards uh, completion reactions. It also means we can keep an eye on the processes and tweak some of the reaction conditions if we feel we need to, to make sure that we're maximizing our yield and also ensuring that we have a desired product. Uh, in the laboratory, we can carry out the process of saponification with a simple ester, where we break that ester bond and reform the original um, alcohol group and the acid group, but instead of forming the acid group, we form the anion of the acid, which then combines with something like the sodium to form our soap. In industrial processes, fats and oils tend to be used. Uh, we don't just pour them out of the um, vegetable oil container. We actually are a little more controlled about the types of oils or fats that we use and also the purpose for which we're uh, producing these particular um, surfactant soaps. The use of fats and oils also means that we don't have quite the same needs for refluxing that we, we have when we are looking at esters. So that can again change the reaction vessel that we use for a process like saponification. You may have noticed, in fact, when we produced soap in the laboratory, we didn't want to muck around with um, sort of feeling it in our fingers because we just weren't sure whether or not all that sodium hydroxide had actually been neutralized, had all reacted, and therefore we didn't want to expose our skin to that sort of thing. So we were able to just add some of our soap to a test tube and give it a shake to see if it actually created some sort of a lather. Industrially, we can be much more precise about that. We can work out through our mole ratios, our stoichiometry, how much of each of the reactants that we need. We can bring things together in a controlled environment. We can um, look at how we make sure that any excess might be neutralized and distilled. Um, and we can try and ensure that our purity, something we looked at in one of the previous videos, is as high as possible. Any of the reactants that remain in the final product will contaminate them or at least will affect the purity and therefore also the quality of our product. So these are very important considerations industrially. Now we added some sodium chloride solution, some high concentration sodium chloride solution to help salt out. Um, the uh, soap that we were producing, that sort of little scum that was forming on the surface. Um, industrially, that's much easier to do than it is in the school laboratory. We're kind of doing it in a bit of a haphazard and a very fast way just to kind of um, see if we can give you something that you can identify as uh, soap. Much more controlled when it happens on an industrial level. There's more money to be invested. There's more time to be invested. There are more uh, people involved in the processes to monitor, uh, to carry out the processes, to make any modifications that need to be made and to evaluate and analyze the quality of the final product. Industrial use um, expands beyond just the large scale. So we need for it to be industrial, it needs to be large scale. It needs to be a product that's in a lot of homes, if not most. It also is something that needs to have a high demand, but it's also something that we need to make sure um, that it has identifiable and specific uses. Saponification is a good example to look at for industrial uses because we know soaps and detergents are such a ubiquitous kind of a chemical product um, that we all, or at least most of us, use. Um, so again, here's another industrial process that's worth looking at. Again, expand from the industrial uses to look at things like uh, the availability of the reagents, the reaction conditions, the yield and the purity, and also the environmental and social. And that's the final section that we're going to be looking at in the final video of this course. And we'll do that next. Thanks for watching.